Hello everyone and welcome back. I am joined by David Fry, the owner of Cognitive Gaming and Cognitive Red. The first game we saw, both of your teams had to face each other. What is it like having both of your teams face each other in round one? So one of the great things about both teams facing each other is obviously no matter what I get a spot in the finals, I mean, <laughs> it, it sounds a little bad for whichever team loses, but I do get a spot in the finals. Sure, we don't get the very exciting games with Dignitas and Snipe yet, um, but with single elimination, hey, it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Cognitive Red seem to be doing really well. I actually thought they had it towards the late game is when they fell off. What has Cog Red been doing to trade? Um, so, the biggest pickup for Cog, the reason why we picked up Cog Red was to get a sister and scrim team for Cognitive Prime because for a good two, three months, no one would scrim Cognitive Prime. It made sense. I mean, they were winning everything, and what's the best way to sort of deny that would be to deny experience, sort of not let them catch up to the current metagame. Um, our picks and bans were kind of horrendous for quite a while. Um, but they've been scrimming nonstop, and I believe that, especially with this game, the biggest problem that Cognitive Red has is they're new. They, they aren't as old, they aren't they don't have that perfect team fight strategy yet, which really was what turned the game. They don't have the amount of synergy that you build up in seven, eight months as opposed to two or three. Do you think we're gonna see a Thor ban? I, I don't know, I love Thorgars, but I don't know if it is ban worthy on land, not because Zero Gars isn't amazing with it, or Dugars, whatever you wish to call him. Not that he's not amazing with it, it's, it's more, it's just a, it's a niche pick that they play against a lot, so they really may not have a problem with giving it up. Well, we got game two ready to go right now, guys. Let's join DM and Dry Bear over at the caster desk. Thank you, Kelly, and everyone, welcome back to the North American Pro League kickoff lane. We're going into the second game of the first match, Cognitive Red versus Cognitive Prime. Cognitive Red had a bit of a lead there in the beginning. Now Cognitive Prime turned it right back around towards the mid-stage. We'll see if Cog Red can get this win. So I'm looking at the last game, and the thing that I think peers out the most to me was MLC Stealth was just absolutely on fire. He was. On fire. Every snipe was golden. He's diving towers for kills, setting everything up for everyone, kept them continuously pushing down the left side on the final engagements with the sure. raw heel. And it, what I loved from the boosh, and I think this is probably one of the best counter plays we saw throughout the game, is that the raw heel's there. They're keeping themselves up. As soon as the raw heel ends, they have their initiate purpose with bomb stun coming out. They don't right. really have the damage. They don't have the control to really get it. They were a little bit too far behind at this point, but the ideas are there, and they might be able to turn it around. You know, the one thing I really loved about that last match was going to be Jeff Hinla and Geb. Every single time that Cog Red had a chance to initiate, yeah. shockwave, yeah. shockwave, shockwave. Every time. Whoever they initiated on, shield. And that's why Geb is so fantastic. Jeff Hinla has a 90% win rate with Geb, and every time he plays Geb, everyone on his team has a higher KDA because of it. But here comes the bans. Looks like Cog Prime has taken first pick, first ban again. So Cognitive Red really likes that second pick here. Osiris banned out. Giannis and Aphrodite gone. Again, the same band's coming through. Thor might make it. I think he's going to make it through again. I can't imagine that Garz is going to let it go either. This is, th that was kind of what we saw do so well in the right. beginning. A few changes might need to have to be made, but honestly, I think we're going to see kind of more of the same. Now, one thing I did talk to Barracuda about is that, how do you feel about letting Rom go? And he says, you know what? It's not that bad. As long as I survive the first few levels of laning phase, I think I'm okay. So Paul's going to be banned out yet again, but with how Bear could have played Rom last time, is it really worth it? I mean, his early game was rough, but late game, those snipe shots coming out oh, from man. Astral Barrage were beautiful. Oh, his man. control and piercing shots coming out from Astral Strike kept him in the fight. I mean, he was diving towers with it. I think, I think this is a good idea. This, Stealing however, Raw away. This is the play. Stealing Raw Taking away. Taking Raw away from MLC Stealth. You know, they know they want it. They know that Cog wants that raw pick. Red knows that they want the raw yes. pick. Pick it early. Let them get a different uh -oh. pick. Let them get the Athena. Pick the Geb as a counter. It's DM's favorite character, the Noodle, coming out here. <sighs> now, one thing that's terrifying <sighs> about this, MLC Stealth's KDA with Al Guang is 8.04. He plays that character like no one else in the game right now, what's his, and he what's destroys it. 88%. <laughs> Amazing amount. He plays that character so fantastically. It looks like Athena's going to go to Cognitive Prime here. Now, another thing to look at, Cognitive Prime has never lost a single match in competition if they get Athena. That is nonsense, actually. I mean, there's, 
I, I almost don't. I mean, I've seen the stat. I know that it's true, and I still yes. don't believe it. Well, that is going to be Hinla for you. Across the way, Cogbred picks up Geb in response. The bands are coming out. Freya is going to be removed here. A shot at Anister. He plays the character very well. Like we were mentioning before, again, kind of Prime has never lost to Cogbred if they get Freya. So now one ban remains. This is going to be Cog Prime's uh, final pick here for the uh, ban phase. Now we've seen these uh, five exact bans I that would we ban saw last Ool. time. Really? I would ban Ool. Take it away from Snoopy. Snoopy is the target here. And again, Snoopy's never won if he gets behind that last game. Ool, Ool is one of his Ool. strongest. Wait, did you just influence? Did that just happen? Influence. I, th I think they're going to ban it. I Ooh. think they're going to ban Ool. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm a prophet. I, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> option back to Bush here. I assume the raw is likely for mid. Again, Omega said he's not worried about the mages. Right. Maybe we're going to see uh, Divios pick up the famous Hercules. Maybe. Divios is an interesting player, right? The way he plays is he, you know, he, he likes playing his bruisers. Chalk is actually pretty high up on his list the way he plays that Ooh, character. Chunk so way. we'll see if, uh, oh, okay. Now, again, we did see in the last match, actually, Divios did pull ahead pretty significantly in that lane, getting the higher experience, higher gold, and also more uh, control of the area around solo lane. Right. But it didn't seem like it bothered Omega at all, and that, that's the problem with Vamana, right? When you're playing Vamana, you're thinking, okay, I have 20 minutes to get all my items, and once I do, I win. Yeah, pretty much, and that's exactly <laughs> what we saw. So right. The two team fights that they won handily were on the back of how much damage Omega can yes. do in seven seconds. And apparently it's a lot. The same two last picks come out from Cognitive Prime. Why mess with success here? They're picking up Vamana and Hoonbots. Hoonbots, a fascinating character, realistically. That ultimate is just the cornerstone of him playing right. If you miss that ultimate, you don't really do anything. We're seeing pretty much all the same picks that we saw last time, yes. except now Snoopy does not have his Uller available. So he's going to have a few choices. Freya's also banned out. So we're, we're kind of looking at characters like Artemis, Honor, Artemis Neath, I think are going to be our big three. Um, Neath has been drastically underplayed in the last couple weeks. Artemis, I don't know that we're going to see on her. Uh, Artemis seems to be the It's his second most played player. god. His fourth is Neath. And so he loves Ool. Ool's okay. his biggest thing. So can he go for a different selection here? Yeah. ADC Merc. Oh yes. my god. Yes. This is the boldness coming out here. Now, Mercury has some of the highest DPS out of any god in the game. If yeah. he gets close to you and starts punching, now... Do we see a heavy hammer? No, I don't. I don't know if we're gonna see it on on the ADC though. I I would do it. You would do it I, just because you like heavy I, hammer. I'm so broken. It's a little bit. I can't a little even bit aggressive here. So break this down for us, DM. What does this gain them, and what does this lose for them? Well, lane push is gonna be a little bit weaker. Um, they don't really have the same amount of clear potential, and given the fact that both the people in the lane are likely to be melee, it's going to be very hard. I mean, maybe it'll be raw ADC, but it looks like we're right. going to see the, the Mercury. Um, the major look can be very strong. It crits. It does a lot of damage. And what a lot of people don't realize is that Mercury has access to basically 2012 Sobek Fling. It's yes. a fling that goes through, through creeps. I mean, that's actually devastating. Early game, if they find Rama out of position, if they find him with that shot down or that jump down, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, here's the thing. Special Delivery actually does a decent amount of damage to minions as you pass through. So it's a decent clear mechanic. So sometimes you see Mercury's using Major Look and Special Delivery to clear the wave. Here's the problem, though. Rama has a more significant push than him. Yeah. And the second he gets a chance, it's going to be that roll into the cripple for a full second. He cannot dash away. And Mercury is not a very durable character. Well, we're going to get into it. We're going to find out what's going to happen in that duo lane as we get into game two, where Cognitive Red's pulling out the stops with the janky picks. They're going for the win. Let's hear it for everyone here live and everyone in chat online. Who are you going to give it to? It's 1-0 for Cognitive Prime. Cognitive Prime, give it up, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got Cognitive Red on the other side fighting for their chance. They're desperate here. They have to get this win. So starting off, we're going to see Snoopy going to Throwing Dagger. This is going to make his melee clear much faster. And since Major Look will proc on hit effects, the Throwing Dagger, uh, which will apply extra damage to area around of what you're hitting, sure. will be able to clear the wave very, very, very quickly. Here's the question though, DM, does he finish it? I don't think we're going to see, I mean, we might see the Golden Dagger, it's possible, it does a decent amount of damage, has a decent crit rate on it as well, but as you go into the late game, it's not as effective, there's not as much right. grouping, really it comes down to how they want to play it. Early game, I, I think they should be trying to fight, I mean, right now, putting Mercury with 22 physical power and 7% crit chance with AoE damage, like, 
I'd be pretty afraid. Snoopy knows he's going to be taking damage here. He's got three health potions in his inventory. He knows his days yeah. are numbered as far as harassment goes, especially up against a Rom who is very well known for his harassment mechanics, especially with the fact that, you know, Rom doesn't have to expend a lot of mana to do it. So he's free to sit. I mean, you know, as far as the burden goes, there's Maybe none really on Barracuda right now to just sit back, control the wave, wait for Snoopy to make a mistake, and he could capitalize or not. But, you know, looking at Snoopy as a player, again, he's one of those players that has to get a lead early to do well with it. So they may just go for the game, like you were saying. Well, when the game starts, it doesn't look like anyone is getting too crazy. Geb rolls away very quickly, uh, gets himself to the blue buff. Uh, going to lane, we're going to see the duos. Not too much trouble going on whatsoever as we see both mid laners get to lane. And probably topside, we're going to see uh, guards and TDOs get to lane far before. It really is going to depend on the amount of pressure. Actually, Andy and Omega throwing some serious damage out. And somehow, the order side of the map will reach the solo lane before Chaos. That is very rare indeed, but good control there. A little bit slow, and of course, it does happen if you have a mage in the solo lane just because they yeah. don't have the double hog, uh, whereas you're going to see one on Omega there to clear the wave out. And so generally, if you have a mage, it slows down the clear in the jungle a little bit um, and allows you to kind of push it through. But it looks like they're not going to lose anything over there. Uh, Megatron doing that little bit, the back bait. Of course, Snoopy, look at his HP. He's at 150 <laughs> right now. He's already used one of his potions here, it looks like. He's down to two, and he can't get near the wave. This is the problem he needs. And the other thing as well is that Eonic is going to have to babysit him. He can't go to mid as much. You know, what, what he's really looking for at this point is that seven 7% crit chance. He has three shots on the major look to hope that that 7% crit procs and just burns the wave down. So far, it hasn't been going well, and Barra really didn't expend too many of ast his astral arrows in the second rush there. Snoopy still falls behind. They're going to have to find something because they're starting to lose gold. Really, without that kind of push, we're looking on Ionic to maybe try to find a way to stop Barra, but with those piercing shots, it's so hard to stop Rama. Even with the blue buff, he's running out of mana. Uh -oh. There's the shield. Great shield from Ionic, keeping him alive there. I want to talk a little bit about the noodle. Let's okay. talk a little about the noodle here. I mean, look at the stats so far. MLC Stealth in competition history, 58 kills, 12 deaths. That puts him at an 8.04 kill death I ratio. He has a 100% win rate out of eight games. He's never lost a match with Al Guang. Average GPM is 485 with Al Guang for mid, 438. He's almost four, he's over 40 GPM higher than the average for mid with Al Guang. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, 100% win ratio? And then we have the 100% win ratio, ratio from Athena? Yes. Like, how can they lose? Things are looking Statistically, good. Statistically, they cannot lose this game. <laughs> you heard it here first from DM, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Already predicted the end of the match here. But you see three hogs inside of Cog Prime, two hogs inside of Cog Red. So we'll see if that influences their decisions here. Devio starting with that tiny trinket this time around. Boosh is going straight for the boots, where previously he did end up going for the sash. Rushed out there. Crossway Barracuda starting out with the spike gauntlet. Now, the thing is, is you need throwing dagger to clear the wave. Uh-oh. And is there jumping in? Does he have the pressure? Get does. The perfect Good split. spot. Eonic will go down here. There is no chance. Anister threw the absolute most perfect satellite I think I've seen in competitive play in months. It forced him not only down, but towards the wall, yeah. so he couldn't roll out very easily. He'd have to cross over in a diagonal fashion, giving more of a distance. We could not get that clear that he needed to get out. And here's the problem, right? Snoopy is relying on Ionic more than he normally would just because of his Mercury. So let's look a little bit at the sports on screen here to see how they do statistically uh, on the bottom of the match here. So pulling on up, what do we have between Jeff Hinla and Ionic? Look at the stats. KDA 3.1 there for Yana Crossway, 4.26 for Jeff Hinla. 442, I mean, the GPM is almost identical, but the win percent is very different. We're seeing Jeff Hinla might be in a bit of trouble there, using a lot of control, but here comes Andy. Huge stop from Stealth! Oh my god, actually blocks the knockoff uh, from yeah. the Bruce. I don't know if he's going to have a chance here. Athena coming Dunk. in. Gars coming in to stop it. Don't know if they have the potential. Ooh, Jeff Hinla actually hard. finds a kill. He there as the Gars gets to the back, but still another kill going down. This is big. It was a support kill, and Snoopy has gotten his chance to clear the wave on the left side. Look at the numbers right now. You do see a Barracuda at 2,600, Snoopy at 2,700. So Snoopy's on 100 gold ahead of Barracuda because of that stunt Yannick just pulled, buying time for that Mercury. As we know, I personally, I like to feed hyper carries. Okay. I, I just like to, if they're on my idea. team, I like to give them gold. It makes, them, it makes me happy. Speaking of gold, the Golden Bow has made its appearance. Wow. Yeah, 2,700 gold deep. He's going to have access to a pretty decent amount of damage coming out. Not to mention, he gains 13 physical power, 3% crit chance, and some movement speed. Wow. And movement speed, don't forget, makes Mercury stronger. So, as far as competition goes, this is Snoopy's first time ever playing Mercury in a tournament. 
Yeah, the I mean, 10 weeks of qualifiers, today at the LAN, he's never done it before. So, you know, is this just a pocket strat they've been sitting on? It's possible. I mean, if there's time to bring out a pocket strat, I mean, this is it. When, you're, when you have your tournament life in the handle, you have to bring out stuff that's not expected. It's your only chance. Well, here's the problem, right? I mean, Cognitive is one of those teams that kind of in prime, of course, they like to play it by the book. They play very stable. They like to farm early. They win mid and late. And I feel like, you know, wild strategies generally don't work with those kind of teams because they don't really make any openings for you to play with. I'm looking at the numbers right now. Snoopy actually has an advantage as Rama goes up into the air. Snoopy is actually slightly ahead in experience, level 7 to level 6, and he's actually ahead by about 100 gold as well, despite the fact that Barra has two assists. Interesting play here. Divios has actually gone for Divine Ruin Rush. On that baby, he wants to make sure that that ultimate will not play the same amount of effect. Actually right there, maybe a little bit of land nerves, throws out the card and it actually gets juked. That's one of the hardest abilities in the game to actually get around. It has a huge radius, lasts forever, and Omega seems to find a way around it. Right. Well, the big thing, the big thing is that you understand against Aphrodite and Ra and Chunga even, uh, but against Vamon, I mean, you, you lean on John Quay for damage, right? right? Look at the lineup here for Cog Red. They're very team oriented. You got the initiation from Mercury, initiation from Ionic there on Geb. You got the ultimate from Thor. Whoa. They're very bursty, so I'm, I'm curious to see if this Divine Rune is going to work out. There was a kind of a big grouping there coming out from Prime, but they back off. Nothing gained from it. You're seeing Gar's putting himself in position as well, but he, he's just going to make himself known in the mid lane. I'm not sure what he's looking to rotate towards. We're having some respawn soon, but here comes Andy. Jumping on top, ultimate oh so oh, Spirit's Heaven is going to miss, though. Boosh is still alive. I think ultimate coming through. Great taunt. Shield wall is going to come through. Boosh oh! gets the hit on Anister. He's, He's alive. alive! He's running away. Can he get the distance? Boosh actually gets a shield. Eonic rolling in. Cataclysm Stealth. knock up. Stealth. Stealth. He can't get away. The Noodle wanted to kill, and Boosh is now officially the tastiest bait we've seen today. Dude, that was three ults. How wow. Did, and then and the Athena taunt. Like, how does he get away from that? And you, you look at his actors. Uh -oh. There's no beats. There's no uh -oh. ages. One, two, three. Oh, he gets it. Barracuda. Barracuda's got the snipe. He's coming in, too. He's looking for an opportunity. Eonic's uh -oh. getting low. Uh -oh. Piercing shot. Barracuda. Okay. Getting the dash from the top. Eonic's down. Double kill. Uh -oh. Looking for it. Teleports away. Barracuda has balls of steel. <laughs> <laughs> he finds two kills. Doesn't quite wow. clean up the gold fear. He still goes to Cognitive Red. Um, but he does manage to shrink that lead a little bit. He really does, and I love the control that he has. Let's check out his stats here on Rom in general. Now, he's played Rom once in competition. <laughs> he won, and he was 0-0 in five. So today, the last match in this, or the first time he's ever killed anyone with Rom in a tournament. Uh, well, how fun is that? That's awesome. That's fantastic. Congratulations, Barra. Especially if you're going to one before them at the Gold Fury and get two kills. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, he dives in. He actually gets out of that one, too. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> Speaking of getting out, look, the right side, both the leaders are very low here. Looks like they're going to survive. Divios and Omega splitting away here. Omega will be going home. Divios is so very squishy, but it looks like there's no rotation. And he's got a double ward. I mean, look at the ward in the jungle. I mean, also, that's a lot of trust in his team. He's saying, like, you know, everyone spot out your guys who could be rotating. He's right. thinking about his options. And you know what? He clears the wave safely, he gets back, and now Omega's rushing his way back, but he's going to lose at least three in experience, at least four in gold. Now, what's interesting here is Barracuda is 2-0 and 2 and just got a solo double kill in front of the Gold Fury, and he's still tied for gold with Snoopy. And we know that Snoopy, when he plays high in gold, he gets that win. Yeah, I mean, while Snoopy did get the Gold Fury, his team has been very aggressive so far. Right now, gold per minute, he's at 380. He's hovering closer to that 400 mark, and he's playing something he, that, you know, a lot of people might think, oh, he's playing Mercury, he's not going to be comfortable, he's a hunter player. When he was on denial, he subbed for every single spot, and he did it damn well. He definitely did, and he earned his stripes here. Looks like the mid lane might be in trouble as Gars comes in looking for stealth. Stealth currently sitting on 0-1-1. One, one. He's got to be, oh, there goes the hit! Jeff Hinla, man, he finds the perfect shot, able to clean that up. Gars is going to teleport out towards the right side. They might try to make a play, but there's a three-man grouping in the side, and poor Yonick's going to be sitting here oh. by himself. Sprint on the left side, stupid getting slow here. The cripple comes out, just needs a hit, looking for the ultimate to come on through. Jumps nice. it and goes back to his tower. He just decides, this is a great opportunity for me to get out of there. If I do some damage in the same time, so be it. Man, that control. I love how control 
controlling Barracuda's in this lane, how cautious he is to just let Snoopy do what he what he wants. And once he knows the dash is down, getting a good cripple on top, he's just going to jump for it. But you know, you can see why when Jeff Hinla plays Athena, they do incredibly well. They've never lost a match with uh, Jeff Hinla on Athena. He's 3 0 and 0 right now as Athena. And he's actually going to be the third most farmed character in the game on support. He's got his boots done already, and he's currently sitting on 1,300 gold. You know, I'm looking at uh, looking at the board here. You're going to see a pretty even game. 400 gold separates the two teams. 60 experience Divios. separates them as well. As Devios gets turned on, slow actually not going to apply from Anister. They're going to turn this one around. Omega's forced out, and he's getting a little Divios. greedy here. Oh, Gars does not find the right direction. Shockwave! Ooh, right as he starts the animation for the jump there. Cannot get away. The, sh the tornado will come through. It's a one-for-one -one exchange. Cog Red is slightly in the lead for golden experience right now, but this game is relatively even the left side can't build spawn, and there goes Barracuda to clean it on up. Gars is in the area. I mean, oh, over the shot. I think that one might have gone to Boosh. That was Boosh. Burned it down. So, like, big pickup there, taking down the mid camps. 90 gold total now in his favor. Actually, I think because Gars is across the way, he may have got all the gold there. Yeah, he, he did a pretty good job there, though. I'm still looking at that ultimate. When, when we see that Gar's ultimate come down, it, to me, that was maybe a lack of communication. I think Devios might have called jungle or nothing, and, or, and then Gar said called lane or nothing, and they kind of went in two different directions, kind of three stooges sure. themselves into the wall, and they do drop it. They could have turned that into a one for zero, but I'm not sure that they're too upset for the one for one. Now, Boosh has recorded one match with Ra before today in competitive play. He's 11-1 with the character. That's 11.0 kill death ratio, 8-1-6 uh, total. And of course, he's got very low average damage, but a lot of healing recorded and a lot of structure damage. So look to see if Boosh can start pushing those towers down, start getting control for his team, and look for the objectives as well, because it doesn't seem like he plays Ra like the damager. He's got CDR and he's got Warlock Sash. Well, I mean, he already has 3,800 healing on, on rec record already. I mean, in one game, 10 minutes in. I mean, that's nuts. That's tied or higher than every single damage source from every single player on the side of Cognitive Prime. So they'll do it left side, jumping in. Steve's got that big, look how big that shield is. <laughs> and you know what's great about Mercury in this case is he can just use the major look, doesn't have to put himself in a terrible situation, doesn't have to put himself right to the front of the melees, or at least close to it like Barracuda's going to have to to get the way clear. He just kind of throws it back, walks away, throws another one, walks away. It's, it's just a good time. Gars is actually pretty significantly ahead of Anister, about 300 gold across the way. So Gars is definitely doing that Thor Gars the best he possibly can and doing it justice. The mid area is being pushed heavily. Now, one thing you notice about Boosh is he's very mobile. He likes to move around. Now, he does suffer some damage on his tower because of it. You can see his tower is already under half HP here, but he's definitely getting a lot from it. I'm looking at Barracuda in the left lane, getting some free farm here. I would expect a little bit more pressure to try to shut down Barra. I mean, that's, you, you think about... You think about the COG guys and you think, who do I want to shut down the most? And almost every single time, the, the answer is, I need to make sure Barracuda doesn't get fed. I mean, right. Andy usually does well in team fights, whether he has a lot of gold or not a lot of gold. I mean, he's always a huge presence. But as a carry, I mean, despite the fact of how skilled he might be, Barracuda cannot do enough damage if he doesn't have enough gold. I mean, that's just the nature of the class. How do you stop Rom from farming? That's a fair point. <laughs> well, you patch him. <laughs> you patch him. Well, we don't have that today. So Rom's going to be sitting in that lane hanging out. On the backside, Snoopy looks like he wants to come in here. Doesn't really have the angle for the ultimate. Yonic forced away. Tornado doing damage. He's dropping low. Merc ultimate. The damage is coming through. Oh. Good dog. Gars might get the kill. He gets it with the hammer. And it's going down. Barracuda gets stunned out looking for Gars. So we don't on the ground. going to avoid it. Gars too slow. Spirit's Tempest not going to land. One more shot. I'll do it. He goes on down. Killing spree for Barracuda. It's going to be a one-for-one one exchange. Honestly, I, I think they're good with that trade. They forced him off the Gold Fury. They stopped it for a while. They wasted a lot of ult. But Boosh, with a very strange uh -oh. rotation, puts himself in an awkward spot. Uh -oh. Jeff Hinlow taking a lot of damage. As Snoopy's going to come in, no special delivery. Oh, He's going to walk in, just get some damage done, and they will get a ward down and clear up some vision. Hinla is nearly tying Snoopy for player damage. That's just because Snoopy does not have the damage or the presence to really get close enough to start punching. He just doesn't have that zone. You saw him ultimate in and leave. Dash in and leave. He just can't stay because it's too early on. Well, that's also the nature of the build. I mean, he's looking for just major look damage. Throw out some CC. Right. Make them look a little while and then just kind of dip well, out of there. Making them look at the solo tower now going down. Divius will clear it out and he turns away to look at it no longer as it doesn't exist. Boosh has finished off his Warlock Sash across the way. Divios finishing his Divine Rune and Shoes of Focus. Ionic looking towards that sovereignty. Not going to have it just yet, but he does have Blink 1. This time, Divios hasn't opted into the Ooh. teleport that we saw at this point in the game, but I think he might kind of want it right now as we're going to see Andy come in. We're going to see the demons come out, popping out, doing a lot of damage, and that Divine Ruin is doing work as Omega's forced to escape. Gar's not finding the position. They're going to turn on to Andy, and that's going to be a kill. 
Now that is just That's a huge. huge oversight from Cognitive Prime. Well, we don't see that often. It, it's rare to see them taken by such surprise when they're playing this way. So that, that tower down gives uh, Cog Red so much space, and that's what is so great. Left side, looking for the taunt on Snoopy, not going to find it, backing away from that. Uh, but again, I mean, you know, once that tower's down, there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide, and they leveraged it perfectly. Barracuda rotating. He's going to find himself face to face with Ionic, but his mana pool is starting to get a little bit lower here. He does have a blue buff activated, meaning he's going to get a small amount of MP5 as they turn their sights strangely towards the Goal Fury. Snoopy is not ready to let this one go for free. He's got this ultimate ready. They're also pushing the right side tower like the tier two for this, which would be even it up. Taunt, shield, tornado on the ground. Does he dash through it? They got, they got his the way, tower. but they take the distance. The tower down to the right side. Mercury, Shock Spirit, wave. Tempest. He goes through. It oh. throws Ionic up. Mercury in the back. They look for some damage here on Barracuda. Up in the he goes. Shot one coming out any second now. Looking for the hit. Can he find it? One. There was second one going to come through. Not going to land. Third one to come through. Oh, Is he going to land? Snoopy yes. drops low. The shield gives life. Boosh. That's nice for the boost. He goes on down. Snoopy's backing away. Snoopy should not have gotten out of that one. And he finally rotates in. They might find oh, one kill here. Anderson. Oh, my Cognitive lord. Cognitive red. The dog for Thor. Look for him. Look. He's going to find it. Gars. Omega gets the kill. But now that means that they have a chance if Fire Giant, if they're fast enough. Yeah, well, the Hand of the Gods was used by both teams there, and the level threes are on the board, only each on one character. Of course, Ionic's still up. Uh, Jeff Hinla is down. How long ago was the Gold Fury? I mean, we're looking at... 20 seconds. I think it was a little bit longer than that. that this might be getting kind of close to a minute. I don't know if they're going to have it done. Omega's going to try to rotate in here and make something happen. They can't lose a fire giant in 15 minutes. That is a death sentence. Oh, Snoopy's 10 seconds away from spawning oh. as well. There's the big ultimate. You know, I low. He wants the hog. He gets the hog. They're going to leash it. Omega might be going for two. Divio's dashing away. Teleport from the guards. The slow. He needs to avoid the slow. Gets the hit. The slow's coming out any second. There's the clear. Guards is going home. Divio's is done for. There's a double kill from Omega. How does Cog Prime keep doing this? I mean, right there, that could have been really bad for them. I think it was really smart the way that they were splitting Gold Fury for Tier 2. They were already ahead. They could have used that pressure. Right. But the issue right now is that that Fire Giant is not in a good spot. Oh, God. Snoopy's here. What can he do? Mercury is not a good character to contest a 5-man Fire Giant. He's jumping Damage in. Damage into lava. Taunt. Looking for it. Barracuda's up. Looking for the shot. Can he go for the... He goes for the Fire Giant. Smart, smart play. Smart. Keeps it down. Definitely is on top. Tornadoes are there. It's not in range yet. Barracuda going down. Garth is going for it. Eonic is coming through here. Jeffrey is dropping low. The He's going to die. Did it reset? It did no. reset. It did reset. It got the, it. The lava is still going, but Snoopy able to find the same play that Omega Stealth did. Stealth has an ultimate. It, oh, there it goes. It's not going to do the damage he's looking for. Stealth's oh going to go down. Oh my god. Cog Red has a second chance. <laughs> a breath of fresh air. But Omega's coming. But Omega's coming. He's coming. It's a reset. <laughs> We're on a cycle here. It's an infinite loop. Why does neither team decide, oh. like, oh, maybe it's too early for the this? fire damage is dropping oh Gar's low. Oh, my God. Snoopy's dropping low. The raw heal's there. He just needs to go in and get one cone. The fire drive, it's dropping. They need it. They're so low. Boosh is going Omega's low. there. Omega's here. They got, they got it. They got it to survive here. They cannot die. Snoopy gets the shield from Gap. Dagar's going away. Can not get the damage? There goes the kill. They get a fire giant. They get Omega Tron. They get four after that. And now Cograb gets a six for one exchange plus fire giant. What just happened? <laughs> Why did we just see three fire real life. giant? There was three fire giant attempts inside of one minute before 20 minutes. That doesn't even make sense. Cog loves objectives. I don't think I've ever seen any team do that before. <laughs> <laughs> just two throws at the fire giant back to back. Like, they're so low level that they had enough time to respawn and fight at the fire oh giant God. again. Now let's look a little bit about Omega's stats with Vomata here. 3.03 KDR with an 83% win. His damage is actually well above average. He's around 15,000 average player damage per match. Average is around 12 or 13k. So he's very high up on damage, but it doesn't seem he really influences the game and kills as much. You want to talk about damage, let's talk about Devios. 10k already. Oh no one God. even else is at 8. Like, what in the world? That is the power of Recall Demons. Not only that, but he's got 1,400 structure damage. Yeah, I mean, he's... Oh, look at the right side. The both towers are missing. Right Those are, yeah, precisely. <laughs> Mid towers are in trouble. There goes the taunt from Hinla, forcing Boosh out, but Cogren oh, is showing their true colors here. Stealth taking damage. Now, going into the beginning of this game, we called this, or rather, I called this as a statistical impossibility for them to lose this game on Cog Prime. They have two characters right now in tournament with 100% win ratios. That's right. Yet they are on some poor legs right now. There's Fire Giants down, there's no Goal Fury to contest, and there's 6K in the hole. What better way? 
to defeat the undefeated characters on COG Prime than to be defeated by your sister team. Yeah, that's a good point. As we see Ionic dive in, Hitler taking some damage. Body blocked! Boom. He got body blocked! And it's just grabbed up. Rommel's was on the top. Snoopy gets to kill an answer. Snoopy's got to get out here. Cannot lose his life. There goes Boosh. Body blocking the shots. Beautiful play. He's still alive. Omanos coming from behind. He needs a dash. He turns uh -oh. to look. Uh -oh. There goes the hit. The Achoo. giant baby is coming out. The sprint is there. The raw heal keeps him out. He's punching through the crits. Snoopy is still alive. He's running for it. Oh, oh goes! Oh Finds my again god! And the bat Barracuda goes down for the DSI. Are they going for it? And wasting no time, they go right for the Phoenix. The tower, the mid lane may die to minions here. Is dropping low. Can they get two for one with minions? Go, archers, go! Can they get on their own? Oh, they do! The minions take out the mid tower. Wall, they take out the right Phoenix. Now it's a big gain in gold across the board. They're 10,000 gold in the lead. 15,000 oh, experience. In. Jumping in, they got the taunt. They're getting some damage off. Ionic throws out a beautiful shield to get guards out of there. Ooh. Beautiful shot by Andy, but I mean, even trading the support. No, uh -oh. the shockwave uh -oh. turn around. Here comes the card. We're punch, gonna see the punch, here. punch. Snoopy. Mercury ADC showing its colors. Second Phoenix getting pressure. Taunt coming out. Three-man taunt. Shield wall on the guard. He's dropping low. Jeff Hill is still alive. That raw heal doing so much, but he gets it with a shield wall there. A big kill on Snoopy, dropping him out of the fight. Thor's up in the air. He's not going to fight. He's out. He's, he's got, he's got to lose this one. There's no reason yeah, to go back gone. in. He jumps out. That's two Phoenixes, a tier two, the fire giant, a deicide, and two kills on top for one death. Oh, DBS is going back in. Barracuda dropping low. He's up in the air. Needs to avoid the card on Stell. Right, DBS is so tanky. He's got a shield on top. Whoa, Rob, <laughs> ultimate. Astro Barrage, Eonic, ultimate. Oh, There's the exit. He goes out. He dies. The Eonic, actually. The double card comes through. Omega's dropping Stel. low. There Stel. goes the card. Stel dies to the card. The AFK kill comes on out. Eonic is still alive. Shield needs to roll on out. Needs to get the slow. Can they go? Woo. Guards is coming. Guards, Woo. we need you. Are you the hero the Eonic needs? Oh. The hammer He's and Omega it. goes on. Is uh -oh. this the forever fight? Uh oh. Blink in. He gets done. No damage coming out from Defender of Olympus. And Divios is back in. Oh. oh. And he uses the bees to stop it. Gets the exorcism off. Forces Andy out. But guards must to kill again. Please ban Thor. Is this Team Deathmatch? <laughs> Are we playing Team <laughs> Deathmatch right now? What is this? This is a really large map for Arena as they're just fighting back and forth. The Titan is exposed, two Phoenixes down, they're going for it. Jeff Hinla never has his weight ever been as heavy on his shoulders. There's the snipe, Jeff Hinla dropping low. Great teleport from Thor Gars on top of the wall. They're gonna back off in this, I would imagine. If there is one thing I have learned from Smite LAN events, it's that you do oh, not die back against Barracuda. There goes Jeff the Hinla. Hinla's oh. gonna drop, Garz is gonna drop the tornado. It looks like he will indeed. Boosh is backing on out. They're still taking damage from the Titan. Snoopy is it. not giving up. They want it so bad, but can they get it? It's so it. low. Dimios, can he get it? Boosh it. goes out. Can they get the kill? Oh Dimios. My oh, oh my god. Oh my god. No, no, not again. The, uh, the snipe boys in the crowd are probably having dramatic past experience disorder right now. <laughs> oh my god, why do they do this? This is the second time that we have seen Cog in tournament at this point. The last time they were like this, they turned it around and won. MLC Stealth, the last time he was telling me he already took his headset off. I wonder if we saw a reprisal of that. This is very scary. But this time, they have a, a lot of abilities that can shoot over the wall. They have Mercury to get down the lane very quickly. Oh, Boost man. can do a lot of damage. Devios is super hard to kill. But I've seen them in this position before, and you certainly don't want to count Here's them Here's a out. big problem. The Phoenixes are still down. The Fire Giant is up, and they're on the side of the Fire Giant. So that's a little bit beneficial, but still two lanes to babysit. They're pushing up aggressively, and you know Cog Prime understands this fact. They're trying to keep the waves as far up as they can, so if there's a Fire Giant attempt, they have to be there for it. The Vision is more defensive on their side of the jungle towards their blue buff. They need to get wards on the Fire Giant. and need to get them there now. Ionic not playing any games here. We're seeing a rather curious grouping here on the left side. Speed buff from Anister and Jeff Henla. Not really sure what they're looking for, but the control is going to start to turn to Cock Red. Now we look at the board here. They have a 7,500 gold lead. They have two Phoenixes down. They have the Titan at such low health that they have to make sure that it's defended. Fire Giant, it started, they know it. Here it comes. Jump again. Humbot's ultimate forcing them away. Looking for Snoopy. That's a big pickup for them. He's backing away. He's got his ultimate Prime. Thor's up in there. Look for the dunk from Garth. He's dashing back. Snoopy's by himself, though. Big made you look. Dawson for it. Barracuda gets away. Oh, serious pain. I gotta eat my words as Stealth goes on his ultimate. He's got nowhere to go. Boosh with the big shot coming out. The paint has been oh. seared, and he finds himself another kill. Double. Jeff Hamlin's low. Double Jeff Hamlin's down. Omega's down. Double Anister kill. has no ult. 
This is too much for them to deal with. The Phoenix will go down and game two will be over. As we go into game three, the sister team answers back. And it's starting the jungle just swinging at the air in frustration. It's a 1-1. One, one. Let's give it up for Cognitive Red, ladies and gentlemen. Throw out your favoritism here. 23 minutes into the match. This is actually surprising. The average match time for Cog Red is 24 minutes. This is 23 and a half. It's what the, they filled their win condition. Two things to note. First of all, we talked about the 100% win ratios no longer exist. Um, second, I want to check Snoopy's goal per minute, 533. 533. That's right in line. That's what we're if for. Snoopy gets ahead in farm, they win the game every single time. So shot goes out to Snoopy there, getting that gold up. And that's kind of the thing they had to look towards. Now, here's the thing, right? They played it standard in game one. They went to game two, and they were like, let's play Mercury. <laughs> I mean, why not? Or do you think we'll see a Mercury ban? So Ooh. I, I think we need to see the, the Thor ban. We're going to jump into a replay right quick here and take a look at what really turned this one around. Check out Snoopy diving right through, finds such a big hit. Major look crits, turns around, and then despite the fact that he's taking the damage from Barracuda, still finds two kills. Watch Boosh. And this is where Boosh starts to shine. He's body blocking the shots, keeping him alive. Now watch his HP. He literally stands in the heel as long as he can. He <laughs> runs around the rim of it. Damage comes out, but he's still alive. I like the fact that he's using his, his number one, the minions and his teammates as body blocks for everything. And it's so brilliant because he didn't give up. They need his damage, but they need him alive. And so he played it flawlessly, and that's how you play late game Mercury. Look for the big burst of damage and back off. You know, he did close to 16,000 damage, but oh, topping the damage charts here, I'm looking at Devios right under 20,000 damage at 19.7 every single team fight. The recall demons went out, but more importantly, he stopped Omega from being alive for basically ever. Using that Divine Ruin to shut down his ultimate was massive. That's right, and the problem is that he never could stay in the lane. Every time he used his ultimate to keep himself alive, Devios is like, nope. <laughs> Why don't you use the well for that? <laughs> and he goes on home, heals himself up, comes back to the way, but that is going to be the match. There's something Cog Prime versus Cog Red. They're all tied up. Let's shoot over to the expert desk to see what Kelly thinks. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. What an exciting game, two! I can't believe we're going to make it into game three. I thought Cog had it, and then Cog Red made it back. And before we get to game three, I believe we have a video to show these guys. Yes, we do, Kelly. Uh, absolute crazy, insane plays coming from this tournament already. Also, we saw some great plays coming out of the tournament that happened in Europe not too long ago. So let's take a look at the EU Pro League kickoff land highlights. <laughs> 